Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nick I'm a cardiologist from Houston Texas welcome to cardiology seminars and on our youtube channel we you can follow my green arrow here on my youtube channel we have more than 300 lectures relating to various cardiology topics please do watch them at the end of the presentation i'm going to tell you how you can get a free copy of this uh, 250 pages uh, cardiology rotation manual which covers uh, from basic history taking to all the guidelines uh, that have been set from 2014 all the way up to 2022 the focus of this presentation is going to be on cardiology board ekg interpretation in a systematic manner the main emphasis is going to be answer what the board is looking for it's not how good you are at interpreting electrocardiograms or how efficient you are in finding all the intricate details that are not as far on the boards and i will show you exactly what i mean by that when you start reading electrocardiograms the first thing you want to do is pay attention to the age sex and key factors the patient was having chest pain while lying down got better with whatever it is or the patient is 68 years old with uh, dyspnea at rest pay attention to the history because the key to the answer may be in the history not necessarily in the electrocardiogram the next thing i would say is uh, get familiarized with uh, this uh, answer key which is used by the cardiology section of the internal medicine boards uh, for the cardiology boards and this is i have kind of summarized here we start off with rhythm and p waves atrial rhythms av junctional rhythms ventricular rhythms conduction disturbances first degree second degree third degree block right, right ventricular hypertrophy left ventricular hypertrophy electrolytes congenital conditions like brugada and lgl syndrome things like that then you have bundle branch blocks left bundle branch block left atrial hemi block right bundle branch block posterior hemi block then myocardial infarction you must become very familiarized with the, the location of the myocardial infarction the age of the myocardial infarction and associated stt changes which comes under this title ischemia and pacemakers i made a presentation of uh, the covering the entire aspect of this uh, answer uh, key sheet uh, with examples of electrocardiograms you can watch that video and in the next uh, series of videos i'm going to be covering each one of these segments uh, and have uh, actual examples of uh, what it looks like in a given electrocardiogram so that you have already seen something like this when you have seen something like this you will be able to recognize that in the exams uh, and i'm going to tell you exactly how it is going to be useful by having a, an image of uh, what it should look like artifacts or uh, pacemaker lead uh, spikes or pacemaker lead spikes once we recognize these things uh, it makes it easier so we can spend more time in finding the appropriate things also there are certain points which are scored zero i mean if you say it it's fine if you don't say it you won't lose anything and there are very key points which may have three to four points generally an electrocardiogram may have like anywhere from four to six or seven points and you better to mark all the points because you don't get any negative points for pointing out something that uh, you think is in the electrocardiogram anyway pacemakers and ischemia so uh, the, the most troubling part is going to be ischemia and conduction disturbances uh, especially when you are dealing with bradycardia but anyway we are going to focus upon this section in this presentation that is the general features p wave abnormalities general features which would include let's move on to the like normal sinus rhythm normal variant or sinus arrhythmia which is the most common one that we come across and incorrect electrode placement there are certain very clear cut lead misplacements which we need to be familiar with and of course we need to be familiar with artifacts we should be able to recognize artifacts because uh, time and again if you are on call at night the nurse is going to call you and say this patient is having vtac this patient is having atrial flutter and you go and look at the electrocardiogram it looks 
normal. How is it possible? You need to be able to make the differentiation as a cardiology fellow, medicine resident, or as a staff. Then we're going to talk about right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement or abnormality. The terminology keeps changing, but that's irrelevant because the point I want to make here is uh, just get familiar, just get familiarized with what they are asking for and be prepared to answer that if you see a change that is similar to what they are looking for. If there is left atrial enlargement or abnormality, just you recognize the features of what are the left atrial abnormality that you see on the electrocardiogram. And those are the things which we're going to be talking about. So let's begin with the feature presentation. Generally, as I said, history. Pay attention to the history because uh, the key to the answer could be in that history. And there are several examples where the history will be of paramount importance. Now, we are looking at an electrocardiogram that is normal. Usually, lead one is upright, AVR is negative. The reason I'm saying this is because lead misplacement happens more often with the right and left arm lead misplacement. The second type of lead misplacement we may see could be the chest leads that are placed way up here in the upper part of the chest so that you get a QS complex all across the board on the chest leads. Anyway, so we look for the PVS, so it is a sinus rhythm and uh, it's pretty much looks normal. So you can say normal electrocardiogram. Now let's look at another example here. This for all practical purposes looks like the previous electrocardiogram we saw, you know, the upright P, upright QR is complex in one, AVR is negative. This is upright, so sinus rhythm. But look at the RR interval here and look at the RR interval here. So this is an example of a sinus arrhythmia. Pay attention. Don't just look at the first group of leads and say, oh, sinus rhythm. Never rush. You got three minutes to complete one electrocardiogram. So write down all these things on a piece of paper. So often we are so attracted to the big uh, tombstone T waves of an acute anterior myocardial infarction, we forget to mention uh, the changes seen in other areas or the reciprocal changes or the SGT changes. So don't be in a rush. Here we also, in addition to the sinus arrhythmia, we also see an RSR prime here. Do we have an incomplete right bundle branch block? So that is another important thing you need to pay attention to. That means you need to go systematically through those items which I listed in the yellow box. Let's go back here. Uh, these items I listed here in the yellow box, I said, okay, we looked at the rhythm. We think this is sinus arrhythmia. Do we have a atrial rhythm problems? No. Do we have a junction rhythm problems? Like first, like uh, first degree AV block, second degree AV block. We don't have a junction rhythm. We don't have ventricular rhythms. Do we have conduction disturbances? Do we have voltage problems? So you just kind of mentally rehearse this. It's like music. If you practice it 100 times, it gets better each time. So oh, there is an incomplete right bundle branch block. Then, oh man, this P wave looks a little bit abnormal here. And uh, do we have a left atrial enlargement? That's how you have to keep analyzing this. And I can't say for sure that, you know, unless we have a expanded electrocardiogram to see if this P wave is greater than one box, that is 40 milliseconds and one millimeter. And if you have more than one box, then it may suggest left atrial abnormality or left atrial enlargement. In addition to sinus arrhythmia, we can check incomplete right bundle branch block. And I'm not sure I would quote this, but I don't think you're gonna lose points for not coding this. Okay, let's move on to the next one, artifacts. You see artifacts in many different forms. This is the 60 cycle interference, which is most often related to, to some electrical disturbance at the electrical outlets where the cord is plugged in. If that is the situation, try a different outlet or try a different machine. And the main thing is, of course, we are seeing the PVs, the QRS complex, the, all these things look okay. And there is some STT changes here, which uh, you can mention. There's like a biphasic T wave here. And the main thing is you see artifacts here. What is this? Is this atrial flutter? Pay attention to the history. 
the history, if it says a 78-year-old person with a history of Parkinson's disease, that means they are expecting you to say this is an artifact which is most likely muscle tremor. And how do we know this is not atrial flutter or ventricular rhythm versus a sinus rhythm or a regular rhythm? Look in the bottom here, lead. Lead 2 is the clue for what you are actually seeing is the underlying rhythm. P wave QRS, P QRS, P QRS, P QRS, P QRS. So you have a, like actually a sinus tachycardia here. So you have to mention that sinus tachycardia. It is not sinus rhythm. It is sinus tachycardia with muscle tremors. They are not asking for muscle tremors. So all you check is artifacts. As I said, be simple. Just answer what the answer key is looking for. And we don't need to be inventing anything there in the exam hall. All right, what is this one? Is this ventricular tachycardia? I mean, it looks like ventricular tachycardia, but uh, you need to look at the whole picture. What is the history? And where is the clue? Well, you see some nice narrow QRS complexes here. How could this be ventricular tachycardia? Okay, anything else here? Oh, here, lead three. P, QRS, P, QRS. This is actually sinus rhythm is one two three it's actually sinus tachycardia see that's how we approach this just because you see sinus rhythm don't just put down sinus rhythm with artifacts because you are missing an important element that is the rate is greater than 100 if it's three boxes that's 100 so it's greater than 100 so you're dealing with sinus tachycardia and artifacts so those are the only two things we can detect here because we can't detect anything else uh, just based on this electrocardiogram as I said, just because you find one treasure, don't ignore the other minor points because they all add up to your score. Okay, let's look at another example here. Okay, what's happening here? Ooh, this looks kind of abnormal here. We need to have a mental imprint of what a normal electrocardiogram is. Let's go back here. So this is what a normal electrocardiogram. Lead one is upright. AVR is completely the mirror image of uh, lead AVR is uh, down. The P wave is down. QRS, QS is down. T waves are down because everything is going from the right shoulder down. So when you're looking from the right shoulder, AVR, which is the augmented right shoulder, everything is going down and that's the way it's supposed to be. But if you look at this electrocardiogram here, where is this? Man, this looks kind of weird, isn't it? Lead one is everything is going down, which is supposed to be going up. And AVR is going up instead of going down. So this is a right arm, left arm lead misplacement. So that is the incorrect electrode placement. That's all you need to put. You don't need to say right arm, left arm, all these things. They're not asking for you that. What else do we see? As I said, just don't get carried away with just one point. Look for the other points. This is a sinus rhythm because we don't see the, gra <laughs> the graph, but you know, it looks like the rate is okay. The T waves are okay. There's no STT changes. There's no U waves. So this, this is just a case of a lead misplacement. Let's look at the next example here. Oh, this somebody went to sleep here. Anyway, what do we see here? Well, first of all, it, it looks like uh, the, the rate is uh, like about 100. So, I mean, a little less than 100. There is some sinus arrhythmia here. So I can say sinus normal variant. That's what we say. And look at the P wave here, which is pretty obvious. It's more than one box. So there is left atrial abnormality. Do we have a right atrial abnormality also, which I'm going to you know, show you a chart as how you identify that. But right now we have a left atrial abnormality. Whenever you see left atrial abnormality, you always need to look at what causes left atrial abnormality. Increased pressure, diastolic pressure in the left ventricle. Under what circumstances do we see that in non-compliant ventricle, in patients with heart failure, if that's the case, do we see evidence for left ventricular hypertrophy? That might kind of support your diagnosis. I'm just telling you how to think when you're looking at an electrocardiogram. You wonder, why does this patient have left atrial enlargement? I mean, that is, I'm thinking as a cardiologist, not just reading EKG. As a matter of fact, I used to read like 200 EKGs 
on my EKG reading day at the VA hospital, all day long for eight hours or nine hours, I'll be just sitting there in front of the computer and reading. And I'm not an electrophysiologist, and I used to pick up three, four pacemaker malfunctions uh, uh, during that period each time I read those 200 EKGs. So when you do this repeatedly, you get better. As I said, like anything else, tennis, music, sports, same thing with EKGs. So we have a left atrial abnormality. And the reason I'm saying is one clue could lead to another clue. And that's what you have to figure out. And this electrocardiogram could very well may have voltage criteria, but it's not enough to call left ventricular hypertrophy. We don't see any SGT changes. So I would just leave it that at uh, sinus uh, rhythm and left atrial abnormality. Let's look at another example here. And here it looks quite different. I'll pause this for a second and let you interpret this. Then I'll show you what are the things that I see in this electrocardiogram. First of all, the S wave is more than the R wave in lead one, which suggests right axis deviation, way beyond 90 plus 90 degrees. Then we have tall peaked P waves, measuring almost like three millimeters or so. Then we also have increased voltage in the anterior leads. What is the rhythm here? The rhythm is just a little bit faster I would say it's just on the edge of borderline, like 100. So this is exactly on the three box line. So I would say this is 100. If you, I mean, I would just put it as sinus tachycardia, right axis deviation, right atrial enlargement, right ventricular hypertrophy with STT changes. Remember, one clue leads to another. First, I saw right with axis deviation. The moment I see right axis deviation, is this right posterior hemiblock or is this right ventricular hypertrophy? Or is this, if you just see a terminal slurring of the S wave, it could be part of the right bundle branch block, which we will cover in the following presentations. We have a right axis deviation. We have tall peaked P waves. We already got two points now suggesting something abnormal with the right side of the heart, with the right heart. On top of that, we have the prominent R waves here with STT secondary abnormalities related to right ventricular hypertrophy with strain. So, and plus also we have deep S waves, which goes along with right ventricular hypertrophy. So these are the findings that I would mark sinus tachycardia, right axis deviation, right atrial enlargement, right ventricular hypertrophy with secondary repolarization of the maladies. So those are some of the things we can bring out in this presentation, uh, in this segment of this presentation. And here's how the normal P wave in lead two and V1. This is where we look for changes related to right or the left atrial enlargement or abnormalities, whatever you want to call it. I've been doing cardiology for 40 years and these terminologies, you know, evolve over a period of time, which it should. If you have a right atrial enlargement, the initial part of the P wave is created by the at right atrial electrical activity. And the second part is related to the left uh, atrial electrical activity. So it is not surprising if your initial peak is up that is suggests you have right atrial enlargement. Whereas uh, this is the deflection we see in lead two, and this is what we expect like a biphasic uh, P wave with a prominent uh, positive deflection in V1. Whereas with left atrial enlargement or abnormality, you see the second hump taller than the first hump. And then you see the negative deflection, which reflects the left atrial electrical activity more prominent and deeper than the initial positive deflection seen in V1, that is as far as left atrial enlargement or abnormality is concerned. But there are times in patients with cardiomyopathy or in patients with congenital heart disease where you have biatrial enlargement and both of them could be having 
like a double peak but with increased voltage and they may be similarly reflected with uh, prominent deflections in both uh, uh, positive and negative direction. So ladies and gentlemen, this in summary sort of covers uh, everything that we need to know about this first segment of the EKG answer key for cardiology board EKG interpretation. And as I said, we have more than 300 presentations on cardiology related topics. Uh, please do watch them. And uh, in the next presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, atrial rhythm problems and show you examples of each one of these so that uh, you will have a mental image of what it should look like. For example, multifocal atrial tachycardia versus atrial flutter with variable conduction, atrial fibrillation with variable conduction. What does a WPW with tachycardia look like? And we're going to cover all those things in these presentations. And please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and please do follow these keys every day in your life if you are reading electrocardiograms you will get better each day i said you can get a free copy of this cardiology manual all you need to do is to send a, an email to dr nick nickum at gmail.com and i'll be happy to send you a free copy of this uh, presentation i mean the book thank you so much for watching this presentation and please please do subscribe to our youtube channel i will see you in the next presentation